I wanted to share about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to start by um, sharing from Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. So if you have your Bibles, if you don't mind, you can turn to Matthew chapter 5, sorry, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. This is John the Baptist speaking about the ministry of Jesus and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And he says this, as for me, I baptize you with water, but he who is coming after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Is mightier, sorry, he who's coming after me is mightier than I, and I'm not fit to remove his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing folk is in his hand, and he will thoroughly cleanse the threshing floor, and he will gather his wheat into the barn, but he'll burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This is remarkable words by John the Baptist, and he was talking about himself as well as comparing himself with Jesus. As you know, John the Baptist was an incredible man. He preached a radical message. Jesus himself said that John the Baptist was the greatest in all of the Old Covenant. And his message of repentance was unique. People came from all over to visit him in the wilderness. But John the Baptist himself says here that he and his ministry is trivial compared to Jesus and his ministry of baptizing us and the Holy Spirit and fire. So he who preached repentance alone was not worthy to untie the sandals of the one who brings the fire of the Holy Spirit. So how does that apply it to us in our lives? If we have been baptized in water, we have just begun. And if we have not been baptized in water, well, what are we waiting for? Let's get on with it. If any of us are adults, and uh, not been baptized in water, that's where we have to begin. But if we've been baptized in water, we've just begun this journey and there's so much ahead of us. That's what John the Baptist is saying. And Im immersion in water, that's what baptism means, immersion. Immersion in water will cleanse the outside, but immersion in the Holy Spirit and fire does something more because it brings, the fire is meant to bring a separation between all our attachments. And that's the picture that John the Baptist is saying. He's saying we need to separate the chaff that is connected to the grain as the grain is, you know, in the plant. There's a chaff that's connected with it. And there's a threshing floor. And then the winnow comes and shakes off and tries to separate the chaff that is attached itself to the grain. And I wanted to underline this word, these couple of words that are in what John the Baptist says in this passage in verse 11 and 12, which is thoroughly. He's going to thoroughly clean and the fire is unquenchable. That's the word that stood out to me. The fire of the Holy Spirit cannot be quenched. You cannot put out the fire of the Holy Spirit that Jesus comes to immerse us in. So it will be relentless. Our self-life, my self-life, and your self-life will not catch a break, so to speak. If we're thinking that we can take a day off in dying to self, you can't escape the fire of the Holy Spirit. And if you want, and if I want to say, Lord Jesus, I want you to be Lord in my life. The Lord says, I come to immerse you in an unquenchable fire. A fire that has nothing that can turn it off. So we can expect it to be painful as the chaff needs to be detached from the grain. Hebrews 4, 12 and 13, we may know these verses, which talks about the word of God. The word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. We know that verse. And it says that it pierces between the soul and the spirit, between joints and the marrow. The, I don't know if any of us have even seen the marrow. The marrow is inside the bone. And you have to bite into the bone. 
and you see this marrow that's attached to the bone and the sword, which is the word of God, the writer of Hebrews is saying, is going to separate between the marrow and the bone, which is so closely connected so that it judges the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. And Hebrews 4, 13 says, there is no creature hidden from his sight and all things are laid bare in front of him with whom we have to do. And it's in front of those eyes that, the, that Jesus comes and says, I'm going to send an unquenchable fire to detach every part of the things that God says have no business being in the kingdom of God. And we've spent a lot of time reading and rereading what God is trying to detach from us and what the fire of the Holy Spirit is trying to detach from us. We can read about it in Luke chapter 14, 26 to through 33, the cost of discipleship. And that's the painful separation that the Holy Spirit is trying to burn out all of these attachments. We shouldn't mistake the cross as being something that's painless or easy. That's why Jesus says it's a cross. That's why Jesus says you have to count the cost because Jesus is saying, I'm going to come with the Holy Spirit and I'm going to pry, detach you from all of these attachments. And then he goes on to tell them what those attachments are. The attachments of our family and our loved ones, our wives and our children and that love that we have. Parents, in-laws, so on, whatever it is, every one of our loved ones. And so much so that any affection that we have for them increasingly looks like hate compared to our love for God. And so we can expect this fire to burn again and again and again to establish that detachment from the things of this world and an attachment to Jesus. And so as God sees these attachments to our loved ones or our, the things on this earth, our possessions, things that possess us, the Holy Spirit says, I'm coming with an unquenchable fire. And Jesus says, I want to immerse you in an unquenchable fire to pierce through and separate the layers of attachments we have to things, to people, or to our own ego and our pride and our selfishness. These are all the things that God is saying, I'm trying to detach you. And there's nothing you can do to quench it. Who said it was going to get easier two months ago or two years ago or 20 years ago? The fire of the Holy Spirit is unquenchable. And so that's the first thing that I wanted to underline as I was thinking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's, the, the Lord Jesus is trying to do a thorough cleansing and an unquenchable fire comes to purify us more and more. But it's very important for us to also remember that as this fire can get hotter and hotter and is unquenchable, he's not trying to burn us up. He's trying to burn up the chaff. He's trying to burn up the attachments. We are precious in his sight. The grain is he's trying to gather us. Like as the hen gathers its little ones, he's trying to gather the grain, the good part of us. So the fire is not something that we must be afraid of. I don't know if you remember the passage in the Old Testament where Moses was called when he was, in, when he was eight years old and he sees this burning bush on the mountain of God, Exodus 3. And it says that the bush wasn't burnt up, even though the fire was blazing. So there is a picture of the unquenchable fire of the Holy Spirit, but the bush is not burnt up. The fire is not for the grain the fire will not touch even a hair on the grain. It is only for the chaff. That's so important for us to remember. And the John the Baptist came to with the water of repentance that washes it. So it's clean on the outside. But there's still so many attachments associated with it. Um, you can think of a cup that you can wash it and you can have certain parts of dirt cleansed out. But then there's a much deeper cleansing that has to be gone through this vessel that the fire alone can burn up and it's layers of muck of self of love for human beings or love for earthly things that God says I need to keep burning it up and unquenchable fire that burns it up but 
we simply cannot be afraid of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We cannot be afraid of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, beloved children of God, family of God, we have lost the battle to the devil if we start becoming afraid of the fire of the Holy Spirit. And the devil will use anything necessary, including a fear for the Holy Spirit's fire, the fear of the fire of the Holy Spirit's unquenchable fire. He says, whatever it takes for me, me to get you to back away from the Holy Spirit and the purifying work that he's trying to do. And I've seen that the devil will use any trick in the book, even saying, hey, you've had the fire for long enough. It's time for you to back off. It's time for you to take it easy. It's time for you to take a break. And the Holy Spirit is saying, it's an unquenchable fire. It's a thorough cleansing. I've got a few years before Jesus is going to come again. And I want to thoroughly cleanse you. I want to perfect you so that you can be without any spot or blemish. Any spot or blemish. And the, I have to remember this, that the fire of the Holy Spirit always and only purifies. It never destroys. The Holy Spirit can feel very painful. It can dig deep between bone and marrow, between soul and spirit. But this is where we must trust that God is a good God. That God is saying, I send the unquenchable fire and the blazing fire of the Holy Spirit. But the bush will not be burnt up. The grain will not be burnt up. I'm trying to gather the grain, a pure grain offering. So it purifies and it never destroys. And the ministry of the Holy Spirit always, always, always comes to give us a hope and a future. So that is why I know that when I'm discouraged, when I think things are hopeless, when I think that I've ruined my future, I have to know that's the ministry of the devil. It's not the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is extremely painful. It's an unquenchable fire. It can hurt. It can be deep. But it's there to purify, not to destroy. And it always gives me a future and a hope. And the other word that I was reminded of when I thought about the ministry of the Holy Spirit is these words that we know in John chapter 7. If we don't know it, we can turn there. It's good for us to turn there to be reminded of it. John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39 is where Jesus also talks. In Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist was talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit through Jesus. And here Jesus talks about the ministry of the Holy Spirit that he was going to bring. And he says, on the last day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried out saying, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture says, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Holy Spirit, whom those whom he believed in him would receive. But the Spirit was not yet given. The Holy Spirit was not yet given. Because Jesus had not yet been glorified. This verse, we've heard it many times, and it does not need to be analyzed for its plain meaning, you know, to come through. If you believe in me, anyone who believes in me, this will be the end result. Rivers of living water will flow from our innermost being. It didn't say the timeline. It didn't say the time frame. It didn't say rivers will come in a minute, in a second. But the promise is it will happen. It's very simple what the promise is. If I truly believe in God, the end result will be rivers of living water. And if I don't have those rivers of living water, if I look at my what's coming out of my innermost being, and it's not rivers of living water, Jesus tells me what to do. Recognize that you don't have it recognize for your thirst for it and come to me and drink that simple just as we give our children drinks when they're thirsty if they recognize their thirst we do and we recognize that thirst and our lack for rivers from our innermost being and i believe all of us will easily say we all have a lack of rivers flowing from our innermost being then it should be easy for us to recognize our thirst and for us to come to Jesus and drink. It's the first thing the baby does after it learns to breathe. It drinks the milk. And we should drink as easily of Jesus. Not trying to put the pressure on ourselves that rivers have to come in five minutes. But knowing that that's the end goal and that's the promise. So it will be done in his time. 
and that when we must keep going and that is the reason why we also accept the fire of the holy spirit because the purpose of the purifying fire of the holy spirit is so that we can be vessels that can hold and taste and pour out the water of the of eternal life even from our innermost being and god's not a, a mean god he's not an evil god he does not hold back the living water but the living water is limited in its power and in its effect and in its capacity for me to handle in my life because the fire of the holy spirit has not been burning up that part of the attachments that clog up my vessel and the water cleanses me of all the guilt of my sin and i can repent of it and say lord i don't want to do it anymore but god says i want to clean it out i want to purify your vessel but you're so afraid of the fire you're losing your spirit of endurance for the fire to come in and burn up more of your selfishness more of your pride more of your ego more of your attachments to loved ones more of your attachments to earthly things and you want to have a break so i'm limited in how much water can be poured into you and how much you can taste of the living water for yourself and for others that's why lord jesus i don't want to ever be afraid of your holy spirit that comes with fire you're not going to burn me up you're going to burn up self and as more of us get burnt up there's more space in our vessels for the rivers of the living water to be held by us and to be tasted by us and to be poured out towards others this is the fire of the holy spirit that must come to purify us to cleanse us to clean up the inside of the cup in much more and more deeper ways that the fire alone can purify and then we can say lord as easy as it is for me to say pour water into a cup and me to drink it i'm going to come to you with my cup and say fill me up and he always does just as a child comes in and asks for bread or for water that's as simple as we have to come to jesus with simple faith and say lord jesus fill me up so the final thought i wanted to give to you was this word kindle and kindle afresh that's a word that i see in luke chapter 12 verse 49 we can turn there luke chapter 12 verse 49 it tells us about the life of the, of the ministry again of the holy spirit here that jesus says in Luke chapter 12 verse 49 and i think uh, brother jeremy spoke on verse 50 um verse 49 i have come to cast fire upon the earth that's why jesus came the fire of the holy spirit and he says how i wish how i wish it was already kindled Je jesus's great longing was that the holy spirit would be kindled on the earth the fire of the holy spirit but he knew he had a baptism to go through and he was distressed in order that it would be accomplished and so that the holy spirit could be poured out like fire and there could be a kindling that was here on the earth dry wood bodies that are offered as a living sacrifice and jesus goes on to explain do you think it's going to become easy verse 51 52 53 no i didn't come to bring peace i came to bring division and we see that there's that detachment there's an attachment that is not healthy and god says i'm prior planning to bring this division this separation and jesus was saying how i wish that this fire was already kindled and jesus looks at us today and he says i wish that that fire was kindled afresh we've seen fires recently we probably seen fire fires and we've been in california videos of blazing fires where some people have had to evacuate some of have in our church have come close to evacuating maybe but all of those fires thankfully have been quenched but think about when that fire was first kindling and it was starting to grow and jesus looked at that earth when there was no kindling and said how i wish that this fire could come and there could be a kindling to where it's starting to grow and i believe that jesus wants to do that over and over again 
And that's the heart of Paul near the end of his life. We read that in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. We can turn there that Jesus was saying, I want to kindle afresh this fire. That won't happen until, until I die, until I'm raised, until I go to heaven. And then I'm going to pour out on this earth the Holy Spirit and fire. And I can't wait for that day. I'll go through anything, even though it was the worst thing he could ever go through. Drinking of that cup that he hated. But he's how he wished for the earth to be kindled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And then we see at the end of Paul's life in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 through 7, Paul again encourages Timothy as Paul is ending his life. Paul is saying in verse 1, 5 through 7, For I am mindful, dear Timothy, of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm sure that it is in you as well. For this reason, I remind you, 40-year-old Timothy maybe, I remind you to kindle afresh the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands, the gift of God, which is the Holy Spirit. Verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of timidity or cowardice, but a power and of love and of discipline. So it starts verse 5. Go back, dear brothers and sisters. That's what the Lord was telling me. Go back to the sincere faith you had. Think about when you had a sincere, without any hypocrisy, without any pretense. Go back. Think about that sincere faith. That because of that, he says, I want to remind you, because I know that sincere faith that your grandmother had, that your mother had, and I'm sure is in you. And because you have that sincere faith, grab a hold of that sincere faith, but now put some kindling sticks to it. So that the next layer of attachments, the next layer of self can be burnt up, expect it to be painful, expect it to be a cross, there to be like nails that are going into your hands and your feet. Expect it to be just like how Jesus had pain on the cross. Expect it to be like a fire that seems to separate the chaff from the grain. Expect that. Kindle afresh the gift of God. The Holy Spirit and his fire is a gift for us. Because he's trying to burn it up so that he can give us the refreshing water of the, Holy, water of the life of Jesus. Which is eternal life. Knowing Jesus. And we prevent ourselves from knowing Jesus in more and more ways. Because we don't allow the Holy Spirit to burn up that which is of self within us. And in this process, expect it to be painful. So verse 7, fight against all spirits of cowardice and timidity. Don't step back. Don't give in to the spirit of the devil, which says, when you see the blazing fire, step back. That's the blazing fire of the Holy Spirit. Step into that fire. Let the Holy Spirit bring his fire and pour it over you. Just like Jesus was saying, how I wish I could pour the fire of the Holy Spirit all over you. Fight against the spirit of cowardice. Fire, fight against the spirit of timidity. And let us seek to be pure. And the opposite of cowardice and timidity is courage. Let us seek to be people of courage. And you say, Lord, I know you're coming with a fire. But you're not trying to burn up the grain. You're not trying to burn up the bush. You're just trying to burn up the chaff. It's a blazing fire and it, it'll burn up anything that stands in its way that's not of you. But Lord Jesus, because you died for me, I am yours. So the fire will only burn up that part of self, which is no business being in the kingdom of God. And Jesus said that he plans to pour that out over the whole earth. So he plans to pour it, drench us with it. Just like we are baptized in water and go completely underwater. God wants us to baptize us and immerse us and fill us with the Holy Spirit's fire. So that we can have the spirit of power, love, and self-control in how we are as witnesses. We need that bold, courageous power when the world comes at us and says, shut up. When the world comes at us and tells us, do it our way. We need to be men and women of courage to be witnesses of his power, of his love, and of his restraint and self-control in our eyes and in our thoughts and in our mouth 
and in our feelings, power through our eyes to love, power, pure eyes, pure tongues, pure thoughts, loving thoughts, loving eyes, loving tongues, and self-control, restraint. We need to be those witnesses. And the Lord says, I'll give you the rivers of living water, of my power, of my love, of my restraint. It'll flow through you from your innermost being. Don't give up hope. I'm not done with you yet. But what's standing in the way is the next level of crud and got all that muck inside of you that I need to send a fire. Water is not going to do it. The gentle water had its path. You can repent of it. But now I need the fire of the Holy Spirit to burn it up. And it's going to be painful. And there's going to be a cross. And you got to count the cost. And the next level of attachments need to fall off. But it's only so that you can have a greater filling of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, we have a lot more of the Holy Spirit and the living water that God wants to pour out from our innermost beings. So we, may we embrace the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May we be men and women of courage to come and die to ourselves and let the fire of the Holy Spirit burn up every one of our attachments. And let us with faith say, Lord, I will endure any fire because I will not give up on your promise that rivers of living water must pour out from my innermost being. It must be gushing rivers flowing out for every circumstance, for every need, for every, every family crisis, for every church crisis, for every situation at work. Lord, I want rivers from my innermost being. It's not happening, Lord, but I'm not giving up on your promise. I want the child of promise until we all be made in his likeness, until we are like him and we see him and we see him just as he is. Lord, we have that hope. We want the purifying fire of the Holy Spirit to come within us. Purify us, Lord, as you are pure and allow us to be vessels of living water that can be, we can be quenched our own thirst and we can quench the thirst of others. May God help us. May God find us true to this.